how can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Namaste. So in this section of Sri Panchadashi, we are shown the method, the practical technique of realizing Brahman by discrimination, by separation, by making a distinction between Brahman and its various effects. Now, of course, this assumes that Brahman is the cause of the world. And even though from a philosophical, analytical viewpoint, that's not strictly true, yet we have to use something. We have to use some method of distinguishing the truth from the untruth, the existent from the non-existent the reality from the illusion. And so even though, you know, from an absolute point of view, no language used to describe Brahman is factual, yet, just like the method of pointing out a certain star by first pointing to a tree, then to a branch, then to a star nearby the branch, and then so on, until the actual star is located. In the same way, we begin from this process of differentiation to analyze Brahman from Maya. That is the whole point of this section. Text 44. Gato yadupadanang Maya madaya tamasim nimitang shuddha sattvang tamuchate brahmatadgira. Brahman becomes the material and efficient cause of the world when associated with those aspects of Maya in which there is a predominance of tamas and sattva, respectively. This Brahman is referred to as that in the text, That Thou Art. Text 45. Yada malina satvang tang, kama karma didushitam, adate tat parang brahma, tvang padena tadochyate. When the Supreme Brahman superimposes on itself avidya, that is, sattva mixed with rajas and tamas, creating desires and activities in it, then it is referred to as thou. Desires and activities are phenomenal and a result of avidya and not really created in Brahman. Text 46. Vritya mi mapitang muktva paraspara virodhinim Akandang Satchidanandang Mahavakyena Lakshyate. When the three mutually contradictory aspects of Maya are rejected, there remains the one indivisible Brahman whose nature is existence, consciousness, and bliss. This is pointed out by the great saying, That thou art. The three aspects of Maya are the predominantly tamas the pure sattva and the impure sattva. Three Vedas, Sajatiya, etc., or three Vedas, Jiva, Ishwara, and Jada. Satchitananda, truth, awareness, and bliss. Text 47. vakyeshu virodhata didantvayo Tyagena bhaga yoreka ashrayo lakshyate yata. In the sentence, this is that devadatta. This and that refer to different time, place, and circumstance. When the particular connotations of this and that are rejected, 
Devadatta remains as their common basis. Text 48. Maya vidye vihayayvam upadhi parajiva yo akhandang satchidanandang parang brahmai valakshyate. Similarly, when the adjuncts maya and avidya, the conflicting connotations in the proposition that thou art of brahman and jiva are negated, there remains the individual supreme Brahman whose nature is existence, consciousness, and bliss. Maya and avidya by superimposition on Brahman create Ishwara and Jiva. When these illusory conditioning adjuncts are negated, the identity of Brahman and Jiva becomes evident. So, when Brahman is covered by the upadis of the modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. When they are in balance, it becomes maya. And Brahman reflected in maya is Ishwara, God, Shiva, or Vishnu. When Brahman becomes associated with maya, in which the three modes are out of balance and struggling for supremacy. The reflection of Brahman in that maya becomes the jiva. The differences between maya, which is pure sattva, and avidya, which is mixed, the three modes all mixed up together, out of balance, is the difference between the Ishwara and the Jiva, between God and the living entity. These are the underlying conditions that cause the definitions of the term thou and that. That refers to Brahman conditioned by pure goodness, Maya, the Saguna Brahman. And thou refers to the jiva conditioned by the mixed modes of material nature in which there is always change and therefore suffering. So thou, the jiva, one who is conditioned, one who is born, one who takes birth and is subject to death, is actually that Brahman whose reflection in the pure mode of goodness is the Ishwara, or Godhead. That thou art, tat vam asi. And this is given in the Upanishads as part of an instruction to the son of a realized being, who, when he goes off to school, studied the Vedas for 12 years, and when he came back, he was all puffed up and full of himself, thinking that he knows everything and whatnot. So the father decides to take him down a peg and says, well, what did they teach you? Did they teach you that knowledge by which all is known? And he goes, no, father, I didn't even hear about that. What is that? Were they deceiving me or were they just not in knowledge of it themselves? And so that Udalaka, the father, begins to teach the son all these things, basically the same derivative method that is given in this first chapter of Sri Panchadashi, that by discrimination, one can separate Brahman and its effects. And then when both these are nullified by the process of neti neti, not this, not this, huh? first rejecting all the material elements and the things made of them, then rejecting the three bodies, the gross, subtle, and causal bodies, the five koshas or sheaths, the anamaya kosha, 
Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnana Maya Kosha, and Ananda Maya Kosha. And finally, by rejecting even the purified Maya, even the pure Sattva, because Sattva is also material. Then one comes to the original unconditioned Brahman, the Nirguna Brahman, or the Supreme Brahman. And this is the pinnacle of self-realization. So this is the self-realization method by discrimination, viveka. Later on, he will be giving other methods. But in this first chapter, the most important thing is to distinguish between the jiva and brahman. That the so-called jiva is nothing but brahman simply covered by the upadis of the mixed modes of material nature, the gunas. So in this illusion, this is actually non-existence. It doesn't exist because it's a product. It comes into existence at a certain point, persists for some time, and then disappears. Therefore, it does not really exist in the absolute sense. Even the conditioned Brahma, Maya, or the Saguna Brahma, doesn't really exist because it is only visible during the material creation when Brahman becomes conditioned by the modes. Even Ishwara is not eternal because Ishwara is a reflection of Brahman in the pure sattva. Maya. So all that really exists, the only thing that one can say is truly Satchit Ananda, is the original unconditioned supreme Brahman, with no qualities, no activities, no designations, no even consciousness, but simple, pure existence, self-knowledge, and bliss. And this is the objective of this process of self-realization. And the methods that are given in Sri Panchadashi, which will gradually lead the aspirant to the complete realization of this original Brahman. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.